Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Form BX257, and I'm here to bring you another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And today I have the 1985 Silver Mirage motorcycle. I thought I'd do this review ahead of the others because I had previously done the 1982 Ram, and I had compared the two. I sort of glossed over the uh, extra features that the Silver Mirage has over the Ram, so now is a good opportunity to see exactly what the differences were. And here is the motorcycle. As you can see, it's a sport bike uh, styling with a sidecar. Just like the Ram before it, it had a turning fork moving wheels, a kickstand, and of course the sidecar with the cannon on it. However, the Silver Mirage has some extra features on it, like the tires are rubbery, as well as the seat. The sidecar also has a spot for an extra uh, figure. The figure driver or passenger could wear this up on their back, which I'll demonstrate uh, later. The sidecar also had two removable missiles. On the side here, these things are supposed to be grenades. They're, I, I suppose, um, stick grenades, which the figures can hold on to. One of the Silver Mirage's more hidden features is its suspension, rather a lot like the uh, Awe Striker. The rear wheel actually does go up and down. It's, I think, <laughs> better demonstrated without the sidecar on here, though. Now, there is one interesting manufacturing similarity between the Silver Mirage and the Ram. And that's in the connection point of the sidecar. The original has a circular and a square peg. And so does the Silver Mirage. Unlike the 1982 Ram, the Silver Mirage does not have foot pegs in order to keep the figure on. It does, however, have handlebars which work very well. They're skinny enough not to uh, harm most figures' hands. As you can see, I put the body fairing on the back of a figure and it's supposed to add some aerodynamic quality. Uh, I suppose it also acts as back armor, which is also rather nice. As you can see, the bike is rather long, so it can accommodate a second figure right on the seat. And here is an example of the bike with the second figure on here. And I've moved the body fairing to the passenger. The instructions suggest that you should keep the fairing on the driver, but I don't really see much of a point in that. As you can tell, there's nothing for that passenger to actually hold on to other than holding on to the first figure. So I guess you better hope the arms on your second figure are relatively stiff or he's just going to go flying off when you play with this. And finally here's a demonstration of the Silver Mirage fully loaded up with personnel. It's maximum of three figures. One interesting thing to note before I sign off is there was, uh, uh, I guess, uh, an improvement that Hasbro's factory made here and that they say that the sidecar originally came in halves. 
However, later on in production, they put those together so you didn't have to assemble that. On the box's uh, parts list, it still says two sidecar halves, which is, I think, something that they never, uh, they never reprinted. Which leads me to something else, and that is the Silver Mirage comes in 29 pieces that you have to assemble. And that's not including putting on the stickers. 29 pieces. The RAM came in five pieces. So it's relatively easy to see how it's very, um, it's very hard to get a complete uh, Silver Mirage on the aftermarket with all its parts. Well, that's all the time I have for now. Thank you for viewing, and I'll see you next week with another Vintage G.I. Joe Toy Review.